Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is actually going to be season four of Scandal episode seven. So, oh boy, there was a whole bunch. Okay, so you know there was a, an, a little alliance that was formed at the end of the show last week. So we're talking Jake, Fitz, and Olivia. Okay, Jake basically wants to kill Rowan, period. He, he's like not going for nothing else. He wants to kill Papa Pope. Um, I don't know how that's supposed to work out for him because you know nobody takes down command. Period. So, but whatever. That's what his feelings are. And they're in there, you know, and it's just like a battle. It's this whole battle of power because it's him and then there's Fitz and every time Fitz makes reference to him, he's like Captain Bowler. You refer to me as Captain Ballard. I'm like, Jake, you're really doing the most right now. Um, but yeah, he was going through this whole thing of Captain Ballard as opposed to him calling him Jake. And um, eventually he started calling him Captain Ballard because it just wasn't going anywhere. Then he had the nerve to tell Fitz no hard feelings. So he's basically picking at him about the whole Olivia thing. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And you're going to mess around and get your ass tore up in the process. But whatever. So then we, we sit down, we have Olivia and that damn Elizabeth North comes to Olivia and says somebody bugged her phone, she believes, and she wanted um, Liv to check into it to see what was actually going on. And she said to, to Liv, you don't like me, do you? You know, this, that thing, and the other. And Olivia was like, nah, mm, no, nah, not really, bitch. <coughs> and she's like... <clears throat> No, Olivia, this is the time you're supposed to tell me. I'm like, she's like, mm -mm, I don't like you, but whatever. You're a client, so let's move on with her. So she hired Olivia to see who was actually bugging her phone or whatever. Um, and the process, we actually find out that it is Cyrus that has bugged her phone. Huck figured it all out, took it to Liv. Liv goes to see Cyrus. Um, he tells her what's going on. He comes clean about Michael and all of that. And Fitz is pissed. And he's like, basically, he wants to kill Michael. He wanted to kill Michael. But um, that just wasn't going to happen. You know, Olivia's like, no, no, no. I'm going to take care of it. So she ends up taking Cyrus on as a client, flipping the script on uh, Elizabeth, tells Liv, tells Liz that her phone's just been... Uh, there was a virus in it, and that's what had happened, and all of that. In the midst of all this, there was other stuff that had went on, too. The vice president, there was a, an attempt on the vice president's life, which was a mess, and that goddamn um, old dirty knee Melly is back. She just sat up there, she almost gave up all the goddamn tea. Whenever she come in there and sees the vice president, she's all like, oh, are you okay, blah, 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 blah. They cleared out his office, and Melly went, went ahead and got busy, honey, and jumped up on her knees up in the chair, baby, and screwed him right there in the office. I said, oh, God, she's back, honey. Smelly Melly's gone. Quick fucking Melly is back, honey. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then there was a whole conversation that takes place with Rowan and Olivia, where Rowan and so to live in, you know, I didn't get a phone call or anything. You stood me up for our dinner date that we usually have this, that thing, and the other. Because he thought everything was just fine, you know, after he told her ass off last week. But it ain't fine. She's mad as a motherfucker. She pining over that shit. And she's mad. She's his child. She's mean and vengeful just like he is. You know, she just handles her shit a little different. But she's just as mean as his ass is. I love it. Love it. Anyway, um... He told her, you know, about Jake and, and Fitz and them, told him, these boys will only use you up and throw you away and I'll be waiting there to pick up the pieces when they do it. This, that thing and the other. So I was like, oh, wow, that was really, that was deep. You know what I mean? So was what it was. Um, we cut back away from that. Finds out that Liz, Elizabeth North, has a secret apartment. So she actually put uh, Huck on that to see what was going on with that. The whole time, Quinn has still been... Remember, we got the woman in jail, that little... Uh, that chick's... Uh, the little young girl's mother is that whole thing. 
where the father killed himself and all that. And then they got all the pictures about Liv and all that. If you can't follow all that, go back to my other reviews. If you haven't been watching reviews, go back to reviews. I explain all of it. But um, we're not going to take up time to explain it all here. Um, but we're still doing that. We got Quinn on watch out on Dan Kubiak, okay? So she's on watch out for him. Now we've put Huck on watch out on Elizabeth North. So we got all of that going on, okay? Trying to find something to, to basically turn the script where now where she's trying to fuck up Cyrus. Liv is giving him the ammunition to fuck her ass up. So we got all that going on. Harvey, which is Huck's son, Huck's been spending time with Harvey. Liv comes into the office. Harvey's in the office and she's like, the fuck is going on? Because, you know, it's just not a good place for him. She didn't say anything, but... Come on, we know how many murders are taking place up in Liv's office. How many times have they gone up in there and set the motherfucker off? I don't want none of my kids up in there. But, you know, people do what they do. So, Huck, I guess, got the picture and everything like that. But he had Harvey with him at the goddamn stakeout at, of Elizabeth's place. Anyway, whatever. So that was going on. So he basically told him that I didn't leave you all. I didn't leave you and your mother you know, something went down. I had to go. He was kind of explaining. He was saying, you can't hang out at my work anymore, but we'll still hang out. So I'm like, okay. You know, I hate the secretive part of it and that they're, he's having to sneak to be with the boy, but the boy really does need time with his father. He loves Huck, and Huck definitely loves Harvey. So um, we go through all that. So like I said, we got, because we're wrapping this up, we're getting to the wrap now. Okay, so Olivia... And there was a whole scene where Liv went down to the bunker. Um, she seen Jake, her and Fitz. They leave out. And, and on the way back down, he's trying to want her to kiss and do. And she's like, mm -mm, not doing it. And he's like, so do you not feel right doing it because we just left him? Or what is it? You know, because there's no cameras. There's no nothing here. This, that, and the other. And he basically got his jollies off with the fact that she did end up kissing him. But he got his shit off because he knew she's conflicted between the two of them. And he thinks it's cute. So all that shit that Jake talks don't mean anything because I'm still in her head. So they got that whole thing going on. You know, it's just juicy and it's good and it's twisted. And I likes it. I likes every minute of it. Anyway, um, wait, because I'm getting ready to forget something. No, I'm not. Um, Michael. She had told Cyrus, don't see Michael. You go on about your business when he gave the information. She gave him the information about Michael and all that. But she didn't really realize yet that Michael didn't really give all the information to um, Lizzie that he could have. Um, she basically had left that out there. Here, Michael, so I pulled some strings and he came over to Cyrus's house. Cyrus had him in and then did him dirty. I was screaming. I said, are you kidding me? He told him, he's like, no, we can't, can't do this. We got to be quiet, this, that, and the other. And Cyrus was trying to gather his thoughts because he really did want to kill him. He was pissed. He wanted to kill him. and But he couldn't really do it because baby's there and all of that. So he told him, he said, um, turn around and bend over. I said, oh! No, you're not getting ready to ride him dirty, honey. I said, oh, you better quit playing, honey. And he did. He told him, don't say another word, baby. Took his face and pushed his face down to the ground, honey. Or on the, the little bed or wherever, the desk or whatever it was. Had him bent over, baby, and gave him right up in your shoe, honey. I said, oh. And he was giving, he said, Cyrus, he said, not another word. I said, oh, wait a minute. Did he, did he man, honey? I said, oh. Mean, nasty, and hateful. That's the Cyrus that I like. I don't like that weak-ass Cyrus that gives up the information and runs off of his goddamn mouth. That's the Cyrus I like. Cold, calculated, nasty, and firm, honey. Right up at... How's that for a hot date, Miss Michael, honey? Gave it to her, honey. Wrote her dirty. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so... It was all going down or up or where, wherever direction it was going, honey. But um, so we go on. So Livia makes this phone call and she's crying and carrying on. And she's like, you know, you're you're right. 
um, th they don't they don't care about me. They're just wanting to fight with each other. They want they both want to win this that thing and the other. And he's like, "See, I told you." He's like, "But that's okay." He told her, "Let's go ahead out to dinner. And let's meet." They hung up the phone. That bitch gave. <sighs> I said, well, was her name Olivia or is her name Rowan uh, Juniorette, honey? She wiped them damn tears off, honey, and called and gave the setup saying he'll be there. I said, oh, Miss Olivia, wait a minute, honey. Said Daddy Pope right on up. And I said, she just as sideways as her mammy and her daddy. So got them there. They were basically going to come in there and um, arrest him. You know, they were going to arrest him and all of this stuff. So they go in, they're having dinner, and you see all, they got everything all set up, baby. They got the SWAT team or whoever they are all out there, baby. They got, um, you know, Olivia pulled in. Um, she knew about the fouls that Jake had stored. She pulled in, uh, oh boy, um, the little scared guy. Oh, why can't I think of his name right now? Big Red's boyfriend. Um... Shoot, the little lawyer guy. That's the Surgeon General now. Um, That's awful. I can't think of his name. You guys know who I'm talking about. Put it in the comments because, you know, I surely can't think of his name right off the top of my head right now. Um, But little scared, the little scared lawyer boy, they pulled him in. So we're, you're watching them set this all up. And then you hear Rowan and Rowan starts telling her about how she, she double crossed him. And this thing and the other said, you know what? He said, all the people that you pulled in to pull this little plan that you had off, you can actually credit yourself with all of their deaths because they're dying as we're sitting here. I said, oh, shit. You know, Papa Pope don't play no fucking games. And you could see them with the salad bullets going off like pip, 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 pip. You just see motherfuckers falling like dominoes. They were shooting the shit out of them. All the little secret agents were getting popped, baby, by B613 agents. I said, you got to quit playing. Like six or seven people went down. She's sitting there looking just as stupid. I said, mm -hmm. listen, Olivia, now we love you, baby. And you and the bitch had on two of the baddest motherfucking coats this episode that you've seen in a long time since before she got pregnant off camera. Baby, they were killing them down. And I said, girl, quit playing. Nobody, nobody Takes down command, Olivia. Now that black box is good. You could cause an uproar with that black box, girl. But your daddy ain't no motherfucking joke. Their asses was killed. That motherfucker got up, told her ass off, and rolled the fuck on up out of there. It was like, you, for the first time now, are going to be on your own. And you thought the world was bad when I was on your side. Wait until you see how it is now that you're actually on your own. And he punched it and marched the fuck on up out of there. And she was sitting there looking quite stupid. Love Olivia dearly, but she was looking quite the fool. God damn, I love it. I just love it. But anyway, so that was like, ooh, child, that was too much. Okay, so the other big thing that happened, we found out that Dan Kubiak the vice president, and Elizabeth North were all in the bed together. Child, when he seen Elizabeth North and the, and the uh, Dan Kubiak in there, he didn't know who Dan was at first. He sent Harvey out of the truck, because you know they have a truck set out. He sent Harvey out of the truck. So go, go, go get some ice cream or something. So next thing you know, the door, there's somebody's banging on the door. He opens the door, and he's like, Harvey, it's not Harvey, it's fucking Quinn. Quinn's wanting to know why the hell is he at her stakeout? Okay, this is where it was the shit right here. And I was laughing at the people on Facebook. Because on Facebook, I, I usually don't live tweet and stuff. But they were on Facebook and they were talking. And they were just confused because they were so busy talking about her coat and all of that bullshit that they ain't paying attention. They didn't know what was going on. Honey, Dan Kubiak was not aware that Quinn had actually been following him. So he didn't even know he was being staked out. The vice president said, if you pay very close attention, the vice president said to Dan Kubiak when he came in to with Elizabeth North in this secret little apartment of hers, can you go kill 20? So 
I'm thinking go kill 20 minutes or whatever. And he left them in there to screw. Okay? So that's going on. Next thing you know, Huck and Huck and uh, Quinn are in there and they're looking at what's going on. Next thing you know, baby, Dan Kubiak was aware. See, the vice president was aware of the stakeout checking out Elizabeth some kind of way. Bust the glass in the truck and he got um, Huck knocked the gun off of him and everything like that. And he ended up getting um, choking him. And they're going with this constant struggle back and forth with him. He's outside the truck. He's choking the shit out of Huck. Got, and I was like, oh, fuck that shit. So he's choking him. Quinn is trying to, um, she grabbed a, a screwdriver or whatever it was. And she's trying to get him. She's stabbing him and carried on. And then she finally got him. And they fucked his ass up. So he was fucked up. And when they turn around, they look. Poor Harvey seen all of it. And he ran off. So Harvey ran off, so I don't know what's going to go on with that. But, um, yeah, so Dan's dead now. So we're still going to have all these questions about what the fuck is going on and who's try who is this? What is going on with all these pictures with Olivia? And why are they stalking Olivia? Everybody keeps dying around that storyline. Um, and what the fuck did the vice president got to do with all that? So that's going to be, man, I love Shonda Rhimes. I love her. I love the way her mind works. It's just as warped, and I just love it. If you're thinking straight, you'll never figure it out. I just love it. So we got to see what's going to go on. And I'm sure Harvey, well, he probably won't go talk to his mother right away. Maybe he will. He needs to so his mother can see that Huck's not crazy, and Huck didn't lie. So I think it's going to start off bad, but I think it's going to turn around and end up being a good thing. But whatever. That's not my book. This is not my book. I write my own books. This is Shonda shit here. I love it, and I had a fabulous time this evening. It was a really good episode. All right, guys, so that's it. Thumbs up or thumbs down. You know how all that works, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.